Hey everybody and welcome to American Beer TV. We've got a very special beer for you. Um, if you happen to live in the Southern California area, you might be able to get your hands on this. Otherwise, sorry, but sorry. this one's specifically designed by the brewery. Uh, this is their local red. Um, and like the brewery, they like, they, I don't think they, they have a, they have some problems with their spelling, it appears. Uh, but it's, whoa, oh, it's going to be like a beer commercial. But not, oh, 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 oh amateur. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, well, as you can see, the beer, the beer is extremely carbonated. Foamy. Um, yeah. It's their local red, and that's L. O oak as in oak tree. Um, check it out, local red. Um, basically, this is a. Um, and the a, beer is, is. A portion of the beer is Asian yeah, oak beer. Yeah, 25%. It's an American red style ale. 25% uh, of it's been aged in oak barrels to mellow out some of the hops. Um, and, um, you know, this one's specifically designed for. Uh, the folks out in Orange County, that's hence the name local. So um, we're doing a little tasting on this to give you an idea of what it might be if you can't get your hands on this. So, yeah. And um, locally, everyone's yeah. been talking about this. Yeah, beer. they have. They have. Um, so uh, it's about, what, 6.8%, I believe? Yeah, 6.9. haze. Excuse me. Uh, un unfiltered, natural bottle condition, so it should have some haze. Also, as with... Um, you know, pretty much everything the, the brewery does, they use a Belgian yeast strain. So the haze is... Getting a little fun. hops on the nose. Yeah. It's hard to get an... I mean, this is all... All, all, all foam bad. right here. But, but yeah, definitely getting some, some uh, um, aroma on that. It's supposed to be, um, according to the label, it says cent, uh, Sentinel Hops. Centennial uh -huh. Hops. Centennial, centennial Hops. hops. Uh -huh. um, uh, centennial Hops. And uh, so... You know, with the red, most reds kind of middle of the road. You know, they're not too malty like a stout mm -hmm. or a porter, not too hoppy like a pale ale or an IPA. They're normally pretty middle of the road. So here in Southern California, we've had a tendency to have really um, hoppy reds. Um, so yeah, a lot of people are are calling them imperial reds. They yeah. just you know get a red ale, oh, hop. red ale recipe, and then they over hop it. Yeah, hop, which is, hop rod. Well, that was that was a rye, 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 yeah. rye and but it's kind of they're all kind of like that though. They're yeah. a little deeper, richer, you know. Yeah. And yeah. now the new thing is is uh, the imperial black ales, you know, yeah. really hoppy black ales. So yeah. Um, but um, so this one's going to be this a little is a different. stretch for for uh, the brewery because yeah. they're so into artisanal uh, Belgian yeah. style ales. So yeah, and when I when, honestly when I heard red, I was expecting like a Belgian style flavor yeah, like of red. Yeah, yeah. you know, flavors, yeah. but. Is this well, kind of is this a flaw a little bit by having too much carbonation? Yeah, uh, these are bottle conditioned the beers. Yeah, right? it is bottle conditioned. So one of the things with bottle conditioned beers that you need to be aware of when you see the term bottle conditioned, what if you're not familiar with that term, it means that the yeast is active in the bottle and it is continuing um, to, to slowly CO2. ferment. Yeah. yeah, to create CO two and ferment inside the bottle. Um, now that's going to develop some different flavor characteristics. It's going to enable the the beer to continue to age and to be cellared um, over the years. Um, however, it can result in some unpredictable effects. Um, you might have it might come out a little too too carbonated like this. It might come out under carbonated. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's a little more unpredictable. That's what they're kind of warning you by the bottle condition yeah, label on there. Temperature control is very important. And you want to keep it cold. You want to, the, the cooler you, you, you keep it, the less active the yeast will be. So, um, you know, you will have less of a chance of this. Actually, right. honestly, I did not keep this one cold. Oh, okay, I, I right. kept this at well, room temperature. Well, we had it in the fridge today, but. Yeah, but yeah. I kept this primarily at room temperature. And that's probably why it's it's okay. like that. So that don't blame well, there it on the you brewery, go. Huh? Blame it on me. So well, let's drink it. Yeah. Woohoo! Cheers. Cheers. It's definitely hoppier than the most of the breweries are offering. Oh yeah. Ooh. That is citrusy, tangy. Yeah. 
little bit of um, citrus peel. Yeah, definitely right there in the back. Mm -hmm. Definitely a hoppy beer. Oh wow. Yeah, so, the so my understanding changed now that you put your nose in it. The aromas changed. Yeah, after getting a little in your mouth. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So my understanding of this beer that, that, that people kept going into the into the tasting room and asking for hoppier style of beers. So yeah. you know you know, locals, you know, in O C and LA area yeah, want they're hop hop beers, so so this was all you hop heads out there this for them. Which you isn't, for it. <laughs> which to us isn't, you know, an over-the-top hoppy mm -hmm. beer, but there's hops present. Definitely. For most people, your average um, person that's not an IPA or whatever, this would be really hoppy. But for yeah. most, I mean, if no, it's pretty hoppy, man. Yeah, it's it's got. It's a just lot not of over the top. Yeah, I wanted to see if they had a, a great beer IBUs. for the brewery. Yeah, man, man, these guys are knocking them out of the park. Now, do you are you able to detect? Any of the oak in there? Mm, uh, yeah, that's really tough to say. If you told me that there wasn't any oak, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit, like kind of through the middle of the finish. Um, there is that. Kind I think of, it comes out a little bit in the nose. I think a little bit, because it kind of does have that that aroma of like. A you're little out, bit. If you're, if you're more out there of like woodiness, wood, yeah. yeah, like woodiness, like freshness. Yeah, like when yeah. you when you, if you're out there, you're you, someone sawing through, yeah. through stuff. Not the old buildwood, no, 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 but no. like the fresh cut, like yeah. pine tree, cedar, that whole thing. Yeah, if if you know if you know somebody's out there hacking or away oak, and stuff, as you say, yeah, um, chopping and, up an old oak tree. Yeah, and and that aroma, there's definitely aroma. That, yeah, that's there's in definitely there. different, yeah. you know, grades of wood and. You know, a lot of oak barrels are charred right. and toasted to a certain degree, so that affects the way the beer is going to taste, right. you know, or, you know, then there's spirit barrels, which, you know, the spirit then gets involved in the flavor right. of the beer. So, yeah, they didn't say whether this was any spirit, but it just says Asian American oak barrels, so mm -hmm. from that we can determine that they're, or we can assume that because they didn't say anything, they're just pure oak, mm -hmm. not bourbon barrel, you know. I like the idea of that, too. Yeah. I really like the idea of that. And that's then you get the actual, you get the characteristic of the wood. Right. You know, it's like, it, it's going back in time, man. It's it going back and like tasting, you know, the real cask condition. Like this beer on cask, holy smokes. Yeah. Like we need to get down there. Serious. Serious. <laughs> but I'll tell you, you know, I keep I, an eye on their website yeah. where they have they have local red on cask. Get down there and try yeah. it because this would be your cask condition. Would just be killer. Yeah. Because this really is, uh, by being bottle conditioned, like we were talking about before, it's pretty much the same thing as cask conditioning a beer, but it's just different carbonation level. Right. A cask is, you're going to hand pump it, so it's going to have these really super tiny bubbles, whereas this beer is going to have a little bit larger bubble. It's more yeah. saturated with the, car with the CO2, whereas um, a cask isn't really going to have any CO2 saturation. So the bubbles that are released into the beer is actually when it's poured through the beer engine. So you end up with this really super creaminess. And really cask conditioned beers is a really good way to taste hops because you're tasting that beer for like what everything that it is. You're not it's not being masked by CO2 because what CO2 does to your palate it almost like stings your palate. Yeah, it, does. it like wakes up your palate, yeah. which is why you know you drink carbonated beverages or sodas so or whatever. Right. You know, let your you know let your uh, two liter of Coke sit in the refrigerator for two weeks mm -hmm. and let it go flat. It tastes like crap. You know yeah. what I mean? It's got to be carbonated. Right? It's got to be carbonated. It's got to like wake up your taste buds. And the same thing with beer. Beer tastes completely different when it's flat, but cast conditioned beer. When they have these really super tiny bubbles in the beer, mm -hmm. it's just enough to put like this coating over your tongue huh. and to wake up your senses and to l really allow you to taste the beer for what it's huh. worth. You can really decipher like, the malt from the hops yeah. and all those different. I know flavors. I've had a few cast conditioned beers, mm -hmm. but I, you know, I never really paid attention to the size of the bubbles. You know, really. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, some people kind of get turned off by that. They're like, it's flat. Yeah. They're like, no, it's not flat. It's you're tasting the beer for the beer itself. Right. You're not. It's right. not being masked by any form of carbonation. Exactly. So. So yeah. But um, 
This one did, definitely has a bit of carbonation in it, but it's getting I better it as be, I get it yeah. in my mouth. Oh yeah, it's better. And it is developing really. More. And if they're only using one one uh, strain of hops, if they're only using Centennial hops, that's really cool because you're really getting an idea of what uh, Centennial hops. Exactly. Is. Yeah, you, that that's one of the things. There's so many different forms of hops out there. You know, really keep an eye on what your beers say that they are using for their hops. If they list the, 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 the hops. You will find, um, home brewers talk about this all the time. We start to develop, you know, flavorings for different types, types of hops. I, I found it, I like to use Simcoe in my really, mm -hmm. you know, my really, really oh, happy yeah, beers. Simcoe, hops. Simcoe and um, Warrior. Um, very Those different types of hops. Yeah, hops real hops, high yeah. hoppy uh, hops. But, some people, some hops will have grassy notes. Mm -hmm. Some will have um, piney notes. Some will have what resiny notes. Some will have citrusy. yeah, and you'll see a lot, a lot you of know. like the Belgian style ales will kind of continue to use like the Saz yeah. and the Styrian Goldings and they, you know, yeah, they kind of yeah. continue to use those same. And then you know the American West Coast IPA uses Cascade. Cisco, Columbus, Cascade. You know yeah, yeah they. So so it's cool. It's Centennial right. is uh, I want to say probably the most famous beer that uses Centennial is is it Liberty Ale Anchor Liberty Anchor Liberty? Liberty yeah the Liberty. Huh. and it's uh, another one. I'm tilted it yeah good call carbonated cool, there we go that's a better pour well, this is a great beer yeah definitely so. Again, the brewery. Good thing we're local, huh? Yeah, definitely. So if you can get your hands on this or if you're a member of a beer trading club or whatnot, definitely ask for this one. Um, it'll be well worth it. It's something very unusual from the brewery, not quite their uh, their style. So, um, you know, it'd be like Stone doing a very unhopped beer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but you know, yeah, Stone actually... Did a beer that was very uh, way back in the day. They had a beer called Lee's Mild, and it was huh. a mild ale. It was the only time they ever brewed really like that. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. part of their. I've got a I've got a empty bottle of it in my house. Huh? That wasn't part of their. Yeah, Fourth this was of July. way back in the day. Yeah. You, you yeah. ever? See, yeah, they have their Fourth of July. Yeah, it was kind of weird. It was like a really like mild brown ale. You know, it's an huh. English style yeah. mild. English that's, brown. It's, yeah. It tasted like an English mild ale. Well, that's cool. And that's the other. I'll uh, bring it in and show you guys. I'll prove go. it. I was there. <laughs> I got the ticket stub. Awesome. Well, that, I mean, that, that also is a tribute to the brewers to, to say, hey, yeah, we like this style. Yeah, we're good at this style. We're never going to do it again. <laughs> but, but we can break out of that style and do something yeah. completely else. So, you know, here, the brewery can make uh, American style hoppy oh, ales. for sure. Yeah. I don't think there's any Belgian yeast strain in this. Might be. But I'm not getting any funky Belgian yeast flavors. Um, I get the f funkiness is is interacting with the uh, with the hops unless yeah unless they pitched a totally different. This isn't the California common ale yeast so no all. no. Unless they you know blended their um, their uh, you know um, house yeast strain yeah. with something else used a little bit of it yeah and then used. You know, then like California Common or something. Well, cool, man. Cheers. Cool. Cheers. Enjoy. Drink craft beer.